Right, it's just gone 6 a.m. and I've come out to do a little bit of bass fishing before work. Uh, got a 10 hour day ahead of me today, so thought I'd get out early morning. Sun's just come up not long ago, and uh, yeah, I didn't have time to go out, or I won't have time to go out later on tonight, so I thought, why not? I'm gonna go give it a blast for an hour or so before work. It's a lovely morning, it's really calm. Not a lot of, uh, not a lot of wind at all. It's a very light northeasterly, I think. And uh, yeah, hopefully, you can find a bass. I'm gonna be using the Pachinko 125 to start with. See if that can entice anything. And I might switch to a shallow diver. Um, we'll see how it goes. Some of these rocks are super slippery this morning. Got that morning mist and a bit of dew around. So it's pretty much bang on low tide now. The tide will be turning in the next half an hour, 45 minutes. But it works out pretty good for me at this spot because it means I can get an hour to an hour and a half of fishing. So let's give it a blast. Well, as you can see here, really, really nice morning. Completely flat out there. Water clarity is really nice. You can see through the shallows in front of me. Now, that's the look. The trusty patch 125. So I'm gonna blast this out and see if we can uh, entice a bass. First cast, first cast in the morning. You beauty. That lure hit the water and I had two wines of the reel. Now I don't know how the hell I'm gonna get it over these rocks in front of me, but. Here it is. Unbelievable. What a call that was to come down here. What's that on the line? Oh, it's just got a bit of weed on it. But look at that. First cast. Oh my God, what a start to the day. Right, come on. And that could be a keeper as well for another catch and cook. Unreal. There we go. One bass. I'll get it measured, but it looks like it could just be in. It may be under. Taken on the patch, one, two, five. First cast. That is mental. Woohoo! What a start to the day. Well, what an unbelievable start to the day. There we go. One bass. Just measured it and it is bang on 42 centimetres. So I'm actually going to keep this. And uh, like I said before, I'm working all day today. But tomorrow I've got a half day. So in the afternoon, I'm going to go out and cook this up. But look at that. Unbelievable. I literally, I cast out, that's my first cast. Two wines of the... Uh, the reel and bang absolutely fantastic one Guernsey bass what a cracking start to the morning that was definitely worth getting up for now one cast in one fish I'm going to get it back out there, see if we can find another. I've just seen a big splash. Just seen something splash out of the water.
Well, just before I cast out then, I just saw a splash in the distance. So there's definitely more fish around. Well, I thought that was recording the whole time. Turns out it wasn't. Press the wrong button on the camera. But there we are. Bass number two. Smaller this one. This one's not a keeper. This one's going to be going back. And I only wanted one anyway, so if I get any more, they'll all be going back. But I've been seeing uh, splashes in the distance. And this one took pretty much the uh, same spot. There's bass number two for the morning. Let's get him un uh, unhooked and back in the water. Right, bass number two. Just a small one, that. So I'm going to get him back straight away. Off he goes. Ah, oh, it's a shame that. I thought I had the camera recording, so I missed the take on it. But I'm gonna ping this back out and hopefully find another. Straight into the kill zone. Well, I keep seeing big swells on the surface. Now, I'm not sure, it could be bass and muller. I just had one cast out there and it landed straight on a group of fish and they all darted off. So there could be muller in amongst everything. Um, but yeah, I've, I've still got about 45 minutes until I have to leave. So I'm gonna keep going and see if I can pick up another one. seeing splashes everywhere there's fish everywhere whether they're bass or mullet I don't know I think it's just a mixture of both but they're hitting the surface some really close in some far out I've got the IMA skimmer on now so I hope I can pick one up on this Right, I think that's gonna do it now. Um, I thought the fish may have moved off because it was a bit quiet for a bit, but I'm still seeing so many splashes out there. Now, whether it's bass or it could be mullet, there's some a bit further out. Um, I mean, to me, they look like bass because it looks like they're hitting bait or something. So, yeah, I'm not too sure about that, but uh, I've given it a few more casts with a couple of different surface lures and no more action um, and I need to get to work now but I'm happy with the two bass, got the one keeper which was just sized, bang on 42 centimetres so um, yeah tomorrow I'm working a half day and in the afternoon I'll either head out somewhere and uh, cook it up or I'll just do it at home. Um, we'll see what the weather's like and what the wind's doing. So yeah, I'll see you tomorrow in the kitchen. Well, hello. I'm out on the rocks and it is the day after. Um, the day after catching the bass. I went yesterday morning before work and uh, yeah, had two bass, both on the Pachinko 125 which in my opinion is a fantastic lure. I actually prefer that to the uh, 140 or the 100. Um, but yeah, day after yesterday and I'm out on the rocks and I'm gonna cook up a little bit of the bass. Now, uh, me and my girlfriend had it last night, but what I did was just kept the tail ends on each fillet 
and uh, I'm going to cook those today and I'm just going to do a very quick, very easy sea bass risotto. Um, it's a super tasty dish, easy to make, don't be fooled by risotto, a lot of people say it's difficult, it's not, or you have to stand by it all the time and always keep an eye on it. You don't have to do those things, as long as you moderate the heat in the pan, you just keep an eye on it and uh, it cooks in roughly 20 minutes. So I've got a little burner with me and I will start by cooking the risotto. Once that is nearly finished, I'll pan fry the bass and then uh, I'll plate it up and show you how it's all done. So hope you enjoy it. I'll get on to cooking now. Right, so these are the ingredients I'm going to be using. I've got some Aborio risotto rice there, some thawed out peas, some diced white onion, some lemon zest in there. I've got the bass fillets, which are seasoned and ready to go. Some dried Parmesan. It is better to use fresh, but that's all I uh, was able to get. I've got some creme fraiche, olive oil, drop of white wine. In the flask here I've got some already hot um, vegetable stock and some spinach. Now you can alter this, you don't have to put peas or spinach, you can put rocket, you can put sun-dried tomatoes, you can put whatever, olives, it really doesn't matter. The key ingredients are obviously the risotto rice, lemon zest enhances the flavour a lot. You can use cream but personally I prefer uh, creme fraiche. It still gives it the creaminess, but it's a little bit lighter. Risotto can be quite heavy with a lot of cream. And one key ingredient here is the Parmesan. And like I said, this stuff works perfectly fine, but it is better to use fresh. And this basically works as your seasoning. It brings the saltiness to the dish um, and brings it together. So I'll get cracking now and show you how it's done. Right, okay, so in this pan I have the olive oil and I've just got that on a steady heat and that's heated up, ready for the first ingredients to go in. Now it's a bit of an awkward camera angle here, I'm kind of on a ledge and I have to bend down, but I'll try and do my best with it. Now, first of all, I'm gonna go in with the onion. If I don't spill it everywhere. You just want to keep that on a, you want a nice steady heat throughout the whole cooking process. Um, you want to saute the onion and just make sure that it's translucent, so no colour to it. You want it to keep its natural colour and just basically to soften first. Now this will take about not long, about two minutes. And if you add, if I can find it, some salt to that. Just going to turn that down a little bit. The salt is going to draw out the moisture in the onion and soften it quickly. Now this is a really easy thing to do, risotto, and once you sort of master it, you'll be making it all the time because it's so versatile. You can add anything you want to it really. Uh, depending on what you're cooking it with, you can you can really add anything to it. Just the key ingredients really are the creme fraiche or cream if you're using it, parmesan, and you like that little bit of zestiness in it as well. Um, but yeah, it's such a versatile dish. Now, these are nearly ready, so what I'm going to add now is a splash of white wine. And just 
just let that reduce for a minute or two. Now you don't have to use wine in it, but a tra uh, traditional risotto will have wine in, but it isn't a necessity really. It does enhance the flavour and you do notice it. So whilst that's ticking away, the next ingredient to go in will be the risotto, which I may not use all of this because I'm only making one small portion. And as you can see, there's nothing tricky about this. Just as long as you know how to do it, it is, it's really simple. So that there is reducing. Just gonna leave that a little bit longer. Okay, so that's reduced by about half now. So I'm gonna go in with the rice. I'm not actually going to use all of that and what you want to do is you want to coat the rice before you add your liquid. It will absorb the rest of that wine in there as you can see and then you put it back on the heat still stirring it just coating all the grains of rice. And then you go in with your vegetable stock. <clears throat> now I've got mine heated already, so this should still be hot, which it is. And I'm just, to start with, putting enough just to cover the rice. And you'll be surprised how much liquid that rice can actually absorb throughout the cooking process. So I'm just going to turn the heat up slightly and that's going to tick away. Okay, so our rice is on. That's been simmering away now for not long, two or three minutes. And as you can see, no constant stirring, not necessary. Um, I'm just gonna leave that. The heat is, if you moderate the heat, it will be fine. Um, if you have the heat too high, it will stick to the bottom of the pan and it potentially burn it. So uh, yeah, gonna leave that for about another four or five minutes. Um, it will need more stock adding to it soon and then I can get on to adding the rest of the ingredients one by one and what I'll do is I'll cook the risotto so it's it's done and ready I've got a lid here chuck a lid on the pan and then I'll I'll fry the bass right I can see now that that liquid in there is reduced by about half now the rice isn't going to be cooked yet, so I'm just giving it a little stir and then I'll add a little bit more stock and by the time the next dose of stock has gone in there and reduced, the rice should be about two thirds of the way cooked. Then I can start adding the other, uh, other ingredients. Now we're actually, uh, actually forecast thunderstorms this afternoon which is pretty much from about now it's currently 10 past 3 they give it from about 3 o'clock according to my weather app I can see over the east coast there there's a lot of dark cloud around but hopefully I can get this done and leave before uh, before it does arrive if it is going to arrive yeah it's a really still day really humid you can tell there's a storm on the way. Might be good for some bass fishing tomorrow, so may possibly go out then. Right, so I've added the second bit of uh, stock to this, and I'm just gonna leave that again, ticking away. It's probably been on the hob now for 
about seven minutes. So it won't be too, too far off. And again, same heat, same consistency the whole way through, and it just ticks away nicely. Okay, so we're really close to adding the other ingredients now. Just added a touch more stock which don't be afraid to do because, like I said before, the rice will absorb a lot of this liquid. It is, it's very surprising how much it will take. So we'll give it another minute and a half. And then the first ingredient we're gonna add is gonna be the creme fraiche. Okay, so this is what the risotto, if that doesn't steam up, got the wind coming in here this is what it will look like when it's very close to being cooked so now I'm going to get the creme fraiche in and the rest of the ingredients okay so next up going in with about that much creme fraiche to start with and you can always add a bit more now you notice I haven't added any salt apart from right at the beginning throughout this. And that's because the saltiness will come from, I mean, this is just packet vegetable stock, which um, they're quite salty anyway. And also the Parmesan is gonna make it salty. So you can add salt by any means, but I recommend doing it at the end. Um, otherwise you might just overdo it a bit. So there's the creme fraiche in. I'll just kind of show you the consistency of that. There we go. It's just almost like rice pudding. But you just want the grains of rice to be cooked. And then with enough creme fraiche and your stock originally in there to coat all of the rice. Okay, next ingredient in will be the peas. Now you can add frozen. These were frozen before I came out. I just thawed them in a little water. So the peas go in. And it's at this point now where your risotto is pretty much cooked. So your ingredients, which are kind of more delicate, like peas and spinach, you put in right at the end because you don't want them to cook out or overcook and start turning different colours and those sorts of things. So we've got the peas in there. Next up, we've got to bring a spare spoon, is the lemon zest. You, by all means, you can add the lemon juice as well with it, or serve lemon with it at the end. So that goes in. And already I can smell that, the, the lemon zest in it really makes a huge difference. Next will be some black pepper, which I don't actually have much left in here. There's a bit that goes in. Now I'm gonna add the spinach. Now it may look like quite a bit, but spinach, once it's cooked down, doesn't turn to much so spinach goes in and what I'm going to do is just add a touch more stock just a little bit and that's more so just to loosen the rice as you're mixing everything else through it Well, it's starting to rain. Getting the odd drop now. Now next to go in is Parmesan. I'm gonna add all of what's left in here. I personally like a lot of Parmesan in it. So get that mixed in. 
and this now is pretty much done. So what I'm going to do is take it off the heat now and stick a lid on it. And I'm just going to pop that to one side down here. And that's going to stay warm. And then I'll get my pan on to heat up for the baths. Now I started cooking that risotto at five past three and it is now, well, you can't really see that, that's upside down, it's now 20 past. So 20 minutes to cook the risotto. Um, it's gonna carry on cooking in the heat, in the, in the saucepan. So by the time this fish is done, we'll be good to go. Now, just turn the heat up a little bit. I'm just going to add a bit of olive oil. I really hope that rain holds out. It's just getting the odd drop at the moment, so. It's raining. Right. I'm going to go in with the bass. That pan could do with being a little bit hotter. One thing I did forget to bring was a cloth. Now, I do apologize about this, but it has to start raining. So the skin of the bass was oiled already and seasoned. I'm just gonna add a little bit more salt to the flesh. I've run out of black pepper, but that's not a major issue. Now these aren't going to take long to cook, they're just the tail ends like I said before, it's obviously very thin, so just a couple of minutes on each side. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get these cooked. Oh, it's looking grey over there. And my burner's on a slight slant here, that's why the oil is going to one side of the pan. There we go. Hopefully you can get it done, get it plated, at least get you a show of it before the rain kicks in. It's looking pretty grey. I think I might get away with it. It is kind of spitting at the moment. Bass is just ticking away. Just got the pan on a medium heat, and I can see it will be ready to flip over shortly. Quite nice, just cooking outside. Just wanted to find a spot. This uh, this place is pretty close to my home and uh, just wanted to get somewhere, obviously with it being school holidays at the moment, you got all the kids and families out, so all the beaches are busy. Not so much today, because it's gone a bit grey, but just wanted to find a little secluded spot. A couple of dog walkers walked past before, looking at me as if I was crazy, talking to myself, cooking alone on the beach. <laughs> all right, this bass is gonna be ready to flip now. So, there we go. I've got the rain falling into the pan as well. That's why it's spitting a bit. Okay, so it's pretty much raining now. Now the bass is only gonna be about another minute. I've got my risotto ready, the bowl out ready to paint up. This is what the risotto is looking like at the moment. So I'm not going to put that back on the heat, I'm just going to keep the lid on the pan, keep that warm, wait for these to cook and then I will paste it up. But I don't know if you can see on camera, my shorts and that, it has started raining properly now. Now 
they're not far off at all. Okay, so the bass is cooked now. I've just turned the heat off. And what I'm gonna do is take the lid from that pan, take this off the heat, and just pop that lid over the bass there. Leave it to one size on these rocks. And now I'll place it up. I nearly forgot to turn the camera on then. Right, I've just faced the camera down just uh, so the lens doesn't get wet. But here we have our risotto in the pan and just gonna go in with a little bit of that there. Now it would be nice if I had some uh, rocket leaves or anything like that just to put on top afterwards, make it look nice because it's not gonna look too fancy here. I've got the bass in the pan, ready to go. Put a little bit of extra rainwater in there. So I'm just gonna put one on like that and one like that. And I don't actually have anything else to go on it with me, but like I said, you can add anything else to it. You can put some rocket on. It's nice with some truffle oil um, sprinkled over or some olive oil, whatever you fancy. Bit of extra Parmesan on top as well. Um, will make it look nice if you're making this for your family or friends. But that's it. That is sea bass risotto. Cooks on the beach, in the rain. Beautiful. Well, there we have it. Sea bass risotto with added extra rainwater cooked on the beach and yeah really simple it's nothing fancy nothing fancy about this but it tastes amazing the lemon juice and the, uh, the parmesan in it really bring it together and you've got that beautiful beautiful fresh bass along with the risotto really doesn't get much better than that. So, thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope you like the videos and I'll uh, hopefully be out uh, this week doing a bit more fishing. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again. Got clean up now.